your cybersecurity solution is here. Introducing Pentester's Advanced Cybersecurity Suite. Ready for peace of mind? Try it for free. No credit card required. Pentester.com. We had a table in Club A, and then John Gotti, Mark, um, Bobby Borriello, there was a group of them sitting at the table. We used to call it the dais. They sent over a bottle of Cristal, and I just was starting to get out. Bruce Cutler was my brother's attorney, and then his um, a sit like she was like a young attorney coming up, Bettina Shine. She worked with Bruce Cutler. So when I got arrested, so what happened? They were looking for a woman. And, and what Cassie and Fallon got in touch with me, I didn't get back to them right away. And then they said they were doing this thing about My name is Anthony Ruggiano Jr. I want to welcome everybody to Reform Gangsters. If you like the content, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Also, please become a Patreon member. Uh, with the funds we receive from Patreon, we uh, use for production and to get more content. And tonight we have a special guest, my co-star from the hit show, Get Gotti, Andrea. She'll be coming on soon, and we're going to have a really good discussion. How and I, 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 I wanted to know, I know you went out with Mark. When did, how did you meet Mark? That's what okay, I, so I met I met Mark, and I'm, I still talk to Mark regularly, and I still visit him. I know. I, I started visiting him. You know, we're waiting to see if he's supposed to be getting out. You know, which are, most of his co-defendants are out. They're all out except him. So I met Mark back in the '80s. I was in Club A, and um, I I might have said this story many times. <laughs> I was with my sister and another friend of mine, Margo, and we had a table in Club A, and then John Gotti, Mark, um, Bobby Borriello, there was a group of them sitting at the table. We used to call it the dais. They sent over a bottle of Cristal, and I just was starting to get out again. I went through a divorce. I know street guys. I didn't know them. I did not know any of them, but we recognized each other. I recognized who they were, like I said, so I sent the bottle back. I says, I don't want this. And the waiter said to me, you sure you want to do this? I said, send it back. I don't want it. Because I didn't want to get hooked up with these guys. Yes. <laughs> what happens then, Mark came over. We started dancing. And then I started dating Mark. I was dating Mark on a regular basis. And what happened from Mark, that's how I met John Gotti. So every Tuesday and Thursday night, we would go out and frequent either regimes or Club A. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, everybody knew me, Anthony, like all yeah. that group of people, the Gambinos. I didn't know anybody from like the Columbos because I didn't yeah. go to hang out in Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. Right. I know a lot of people from Brooklyn, but we I was hanging out because at the time I was living in Queens. So I was close to the 59th Street Bridge. So I would just go right. over. Yeah, that's where Club A was, right? There. Right. And I and I wouldn't yeah. lived in Manhattan. He had the yeah. apartment in Manhattan. Right. So um, that's how I met John Gotti. And that's how I used to sit with them and hang out with them. I never did anything with John Gotti illegally, yeah. but yeah. I was his friend. But I this mean, was in the late eighties. What when, when was Yes, it was in the eighties. I want to say yeah. probably 84, 85. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how, that's how I met John Gotti. But then also I knew John Gotti then even closer because Bruce Cutler was my brother's attorney. And then his, um, a sit like she was like a young attorney coming up, Bettina Shine. She mm -hmm. worked with Bruce Cutler. So when I got arrested on my case for Rico, I hired the firm, but Bettina Shine became my attorney. Like he gave the case to her. Right. So so now we all used to hang out and see each other, have you like up the office yeah. and all that. Yeah, well, your your case, your Rico case was federal, right? It was a federal case. It was a federal case. I was out arrested of Manhattan, out of Brooklyn, yes. or Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. Um. So when I got arrested on the Rico, I was arrested with twenty-two guys, and what happened was, 
you know, the kids were all very small. My husband at the time was already incarcerated. He was doing an eight year bid in Tennessee. He got caught. Somebody ratted on him and he was going down there to make, um, to buy a hundred pounds of weed and he got in trouble. So while he was incarcerated, that's when I went out on the streets and I had a book. I was lending money out. I was involved in on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did what I had to do for my kids because I came from the streets. Yeah. So, but what happened? I had people back in me. I didn't just go on the streets. You know, I had like my brother, and um, it was Mike Spinelli, Freddie Puglisi, <laughs> and Bobby Malini. They, there was a guy that owed me a lot of money. I had put the money up, and he owed me back then. It was like twenty thousand dollars. And what happened was. The guy did not pay. This is how I got arrested. He didn't pay. And then um, my brother had called me and he says, you know, this guy, um, I forgot what his name was, but um, they said he's not paying the money. Florenza, Joe Florenza. Joe Florenza is not paying. He was from Pennsylvania. And I said, what do you mean he's not paying? Because this was going on a couple months. But what happened, the feds told him to do that. He was already cooperating and they said, we know her, she, we could track her back. She's gonna come at you like an animal. Don't pay the money, don't pay the money. So my brother calls up and says, not paying the money, not paying the money. I said, I don't give, go up there with some guys. I don't care what you do to him, split his head open, do whatever you have to do, but I want my fucking money. Mm. That's what got me arrested. Yeah, you're That's sure. That's, that's, what got, <laughs> that's what got me arrested. And that's what I got arrested. Now, did they really want me? No, they told me that. They used me as a tactic for the bigger picture. Because what happened at the time, they weren't really, they didn't really care about the marijuana and all of that because it was mainly marijuana. They right. cared about, They cared about bodies were showing up. People were getting killed. So that's what the case became so big over. So when I was arrested in Rico, you know what a Rico is. I was being charged with all of that. Okay. So yeah. now what happens when I get arrested, um, they took me down to Cadman Plaza with everybody and um, feds take me in the room. We know, you know, I said, I don't know nothing. They said, Oh, we backtrack you. You know, so many people you've come from this background. I don't want to talk. I want my lawyer. So I get my lawyer, which is Bruce Cutler's firm, Bettina Shaw, and they would, and my I get out the next day. It was a hundred thousand dollar bail. My husband calls, and I said to him, John, I didn't do this. You got like they were had murders on them. I knew they yeah, had murders, questions, but, I, yeah. but I didn't do this. I said, you better come forward and bail me out here. I said because not for nothing, you better tell the truth. I just put money up. That's what I did. I said, because the fucking people in the street weren't doing anything for me while you're away. I said, so you better help me out here. So what happened was he, what's he going to do? Anthony, I got four kids, little kids. He cooperates. Yeah. And that's with the cooperation of Ross Perlson was the U.S. attorney at the time in the Eastern District. I was arrested in the Eastern District. And, um, you know, I'm facing like 10 years and my lawyer said, you know, um, they have a lot on you because they have you on tape. So you're going to, we're going to have to figure out how we can go about this. So, you know, I was a mess. You know what it is to go through a case. Not yes, only, I went through many cases. Not, so not only that, it was more like I'm facing prison time and then the feds go to my lawyer and make my lawyer listen to tapes that they were planning to kill me there was a contract out on me people went to prison for that mm. they were convicted and went to prison for that so i was like that's why like then my husband i said to my husband you better do what you have to do i said because this is crazy i so why there was a contract out on my life, Anthony, was because they felt if they killed me, that would shut my husband and my brother. Right. Yeah. So that made me get really crazier. Like, I'm not, I'm so, I think 
for me, and I was just talking to my priest before I, I came out, like I went to the five o'clock mass mm-hmm. and we were talking about, cause he said he watched the Gagati and he always, they always <laughs> asked, are you afraid? And I'm not. And, and I, he said to me, you have such a strong faith because I always feel that I'm never, I've never been afraid in my life of anything. I feel the guy upstairs watches over me and he's mm-hmm. in control and I'm not giving anybody that power over me ever. I don't care about what people say about me. I don't get involved in that. I tell my mm-hmm. story. That's the way it is. Yeah. I had a hard life. I try to help people if I can help them. You don't want to believe, don't believe. I don't care. Like, I, I don't really care about, mm-hmm. you know, what's said, what's not said. I think at the end of the day, what I learned about that life is that nobody was there for me. No one, no one. So I had to scrape the bottom of the barrel. So now I'm facing 10 years. There's a contract out on my life. My husband, I beg him, John, do what you got to do. He was never a guy like you. He he was like, like you in a sense, never going to cooperate, never going to cooperate. Mm-hmm. Like, but what are you going to do? Make your kids go into child services? I had nobody. So he did what he had to do for his family, for his family. And that I'll never forget. Like to me, that's it. The street people, you know, you see now there's no loyalty. No, none. There is no loyalty. No. But, but I mean, when you were a kid, your parents, your father was legitimate. Your, I mean, my I know dad, I, got it. I know, no, I know what distracted me my to dad that. Was a, my dad was a hardworking man. My right. mother was the criminal. My mother. Was she a number runner? <laughs> my mother was my mother was close good friends with crazy joe gallo okay so well my, that's the neighborhood you come from right that's that was the my, neighborhood com- so you yes. grew up in the same kind of neighborhood i grew up and i grew up in ozone park there was a wise guy in every corner yes you yes grew I, grew, Red I grew up so, between so, uh east second between ditmas and avenue f close to ocean right park. so and you but you married a guy from hell's kitchen how did you wind up with a guy from hell's kitchen from red hook okay and, and, and an irish guy on top of and an irish guy on top of that how did that happen? <laughs> I met him. I met him through an Italian guy, another friend of mine, another guy, John Monty. I met him through a guy okay. I, were, I, I grew up with, and he was with them. But um, I think a tough Irish guy, tough. Yeah, they were all tough. I know many of them. I was away tough with nails. I mean, yeah. Sammy knows him very well. As Sammy, yeah, yeah tough Sammy and him are very good friends. Yeah, tough as nails. You know. Yeah. So uh, it just so happened as the years went on, we both have such strong personalities. We couldn't yeah. live together. So when you were a teenager, were you in trouble? I mean, I was always in trouble. I mean, I know you're um, a female, but I mean, still, you you know, you no, grew up to become a always, criminal. No, I was always in trouble with fighting. And that's basically how I got close to Gotti. I got into a fist fight in Club A and um, he actually called Mark Ryder the next morning and um, said, she's She's got more balls than some of the guys that are around me. I couldn't yeah. control her. He said I yeah. couldn't control her because I yeah. because we were hanging out and the girl was starting to ma- mouth off, and I kept saying, "John, wait a minute." I told her, "Stop! You're disrespecting me." She didn't, and then I just went on top of her and started yeah. bashing her with a bottle. Right. I mean, I we had to run across. Kid. Excuse me. Is a very angry, angry, angry kid. Yeah. If you enjoy my show, please join my Patreon. Ask your questions live. And please uh, join my Patreon at reformgangsters.com. We had to run across each other because I was, I mean, I was in Club A at the end before they actually, because Nicky Carraza, he was around my father. He had the front door. He had the valet there. That was, okay, so but, then wait a minute. So then you should know Eddie Fisher. Yeah, I know all of them. So Eddie, 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 yeah. Eddie, Fisher, Eddie Fisher knew me very well. Yeah, because I was in Club A. I think then, I, 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 you know, eventually Club A became scores. But that was right. years later. That was right. years I, we had to be in there a, a, a few because I was in there a couple of times even with Mark. Mark was in there when I was in there. So I Mark just Ryder? Yeah, yeah. Oh, because, okay. So then maybe you met me. I had to meet you there. I had to meet you there because I was in there. I w- I was in there quite often with them, especially in the uh, towards like after in the getting not in the mid eighties, but a little more towards the end, right be- right before they close, not long before they closed. Right. So that was yeah. right around the time when I was hanging out a lot. It was every Tuesday and Thursday night. We yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. Club A. So when people go, oh, yeah, she didn't know Gotti. OK. You know, yeah. when I talk, I talked to Mark Ryder regularly just last night, um, yeah. he he says that's like saying I didn't know John. <laughs> Listen, people say that about me. There's people on the Internet now that are saying that I, I, I fabricate 
a relationship with him. That and that's not the guy bought me. The guy got me. A, listen, when I got out of treatment in '88, the guy bought me a car. You know, why would I? If I listen, you know what I say. You you could probably identify with this. If I could fabricate the stories that I say, I should be in Hollywood writing scripts because yeah. I would oh, want yeah. to. Oh, I love when no, I love imagination. Kids. No, I'll tell you what I get a charge out of. I love when they say, "Oh, she's a she's a whore. She's this. She's that. She's a, oh, if I could be that at this age, I must be beautiful." Right, go for it. Yeah. So so wait. So 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 wait, you went out with Frankie Lino after Mark. No, no I want to no, get your mob liturgy correct. No, no, no. <laughs> I, Frankie Lino at a very young age, at twenty two. Oh. So before before your and husband, I was, actually, before... I was I was living with Frank Lino for two years, a little okay. more than two years, yeah. And okay, Frank so you went to Frankie Lino to the Westies, back to the Gambinos. <laughs> no, no, no. The uh, the Westies. I I met him after Mark Ryder. Oh, after Mark. Okay. Yes, okay. he was my he actually. Uh, Fogarty is uh, my children's dad. Right. He's okay. Okay. Because I, I mean, unfortunately, I, I never did business with Mark because Mark, you know, was a major heroin trafficker. I mean, I was good friends with Mark, but I actually did business with Greg, unfortunately, with his son. Yes. And that's the when, horrible, horrible. Yeah. When Mark went away, his son yeah. had a vending company. Right. And I, I always liked his son. He was a really good kid, Greg, a really nice kid. And we had, uh, we in Jamaica, we had number spots all over Jamaica, Queens. We had yeah. a big number business. And he, we gave him the contract and he put his vending machines in all our number spots in Queens up until his death, actually. Anthony, yeah. you can't believe yeah. when I visit Mark how you cannot believe at his age, he's 74, he looks phenomenal for his age yeah. and works out and everything. And how he gets so much respect. Like if I'm sitting in the visiting room and there is another inmate and his say his, their sons are visiting, like big guys are coming to visit, say their dad, they come over literally and go, Hey Mark, I heard a lot about you. How you doing? You know, shake his hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the correction officer that is going to be working on the same show as you said to me, and he's been working for 25 years. He's retired now. Mark gets so much respect. People like him. They like him. Yeah, he was always a personable guy. He's I always, a yeah. likeable, he's a likeable. He was a very sharp dresser, good charisma. I mean, he was. Uh, yes. He was a sport. He was, you know, was good with his money. You yes, know, he was, he's generous. Yeah. And not only that, he also, if he can help you, he will. If he can yeah. help you, he will. Definitely. So let's get to. I want to talk about get guy. <laughs> oh smash, yeah. Our, our smash. Our smash hit. So how did I know? How did you get involved in Get Gotti? Okay, so because I've done so much stuff, I was in, I also that's when you know people on the internet say we never heard about. I was in Gotti and Son with John Gotti Jr. I did that. I was in that documentary. I was also in Mafia Killers on Rails. I was in every episode. There was six. I was in every one. Okay. Gangster Chronicles. I've done so much TV. So what happened? They were looking for a woman. And, and what Cassie and Fallon got in touch with me, I didn't get back to them right away. And then they said they were doing this thing about Gotti. And we know that you knew him because they, you know, they do their research. Yeah, they do their homework. Yeah. They don't just, you know, they right. talk to lawyers. They talk to people. They talk to the prosecutors. Mm -hmm. So um, actually Fallon really knows her. Like she really yeah. digs deep in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like so, Fallon. Yeah, she digs deep in. So uh, they got in touch with me and they said they wanted to have a woman on a different perspective of like what it was like to be around John Gotti. Like, were you afraid of him? You know, here's these bigger than life killer. And what was it like on all ends? Because they always have men and they felt, you know what? Times like people don't understand that they go, oh, like thinking John Gotti was like a guy like you have to be afraid of. He was such a gentleman to me. Yeah, Anthony. he was he was a teddy bear. Like, like Anthony, I'm a cursor. I'm a street person. Like I would curse, and then John Gotti would like guys would curse, and John would say, Don't curse, there's a lady, and I'd start laughing. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. That's how nice he was. Yeah. He wasn't somebody that I had to be afraid of. No. 
at no. all. I mean, I, I, on the other hand, had seen, I saw him verbally abuse people, but, you know, that's in a different setting than you were in. Def yeah, totally yeah. different setting. We were out, we were having fun. You're talking, you're having a drink, you know, there's beautiful women around. Um, he liked beautiful women around. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a whole different perspective of how his kids knew him. I don't know his kids. I don't know his wife. I right. mean, I feel I feel for them because I know I was on the other end of it of right. how the wives and, and the ki my kids got treated also, you know, from being with guys like that. But, you know, I have nothing bad to say about that man. I mean, he was always very nice to me. Always, always. Mm -hmm. He gave me the name Rocky after I had that fight in Club A. He'd right. see me, hey, Rocky, come here, come sit with <laughs> us, kid. You yeah. know, that's so how they wanted that. So they wanted that perspective for Get Gotti. Yeah, they wanted that perspective of Get Gotti because they felt you, you know, they, they, like I said, they did their homework and they said, you've been around these guys, you've been around him. We want, we want you to come yeah. on the show. So I was more than, you know, great. Okay, you know, this is, you know, I'll give you the best interview because, like you and I. <laughs> Everybody says, "Yeah, we would have, we would a whole show." Yes, yeah. you and I would. Yeah. They, they, but they, but Raw did a really great job. I mean, you know, oh my there's a, I, you know, there's a tape I played it the other night on my, I, I, I on, it's going to come out on my podcast. They played some tapes of John that we never heard. Oh, which was okay. really good. If you know this, I mean, there's a lot of tapes they play of him that we heard a million times that there was a couple of tapes they played that were new. And one of the tapes, he says, uh, you could have 50 Andy's, 20 calls. Yes, I, yes, that's, my, yes. that's my father, father Andy, right. Andy. And right. I, I, when I heard it, I go, oh, shit, he's still thinking about him. Yeah, so that was cool. And that but was I, the whole show with us. I know, but I think also they Raw TV and Netflix had a bigger budget than the other ones that I've yeah. done. Like I, 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 I did um, Gotti and Son on A&E. Yeah which John Gotti Jr. was in yeah. and his kids were in. Yeah. And I was in that one, but they didn't have the budget that this company right. had. So they were able, and plus I think what made it really, really good was having the true law enforcement that brought down. That were actually about, and all the different offices, the state, they had the state, they brought right. her in, they brought her in, Jack alone. Nobody ever yeah. brought her in to the no. picture. It was a whole no. new aspect of it. With Even Willie law Boy. Ford. Like, because a lot of them are retired now, so they were able to come on. If they're not right. retired, they can't go exactly. on and do yeah, this. Yeah, come on. I know. I know. I've been trying to get a couple on my show. They can't yet. They're still active. They, they have to, yeah. If, if they're retired, then they will do it. Right. So, right. But um, did you, could you believe what kind of a hit this show became? I can, because you and I were in it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that. We'll see. Um, and I think I think for, for both of us, a lot of big things are happening. I, well, from your lips to God's ears. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, I'll light my candle in the church and see what happens. I go by St. Anthony and I light the candle, my name's Saint. I help me out. Help me out. I need to I need to retire from my day job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. But, you know, so, I like to put good energy out there you know yeah, i always like sure. to put good stuff out there definitely so what's next for you now um i have a ton of podcasts so i'm booked right up until before christmas then i'm in new york and my podcast i have some really big guests coming on um people that you probably have heard of like all coming out of prison that did a lot of prison time um, through Mark Ryder, like friends of right. his that were in yeah. and um, just good. good stories. And I want to ask these guys that I understand both ends because I understand why people cooperate because when you get to a, a situation where you're facing life, you're pr facing a lot of time, there's nobody there for you, just like what was going on with me. And then my husband had to come bail me out. Yeah. And help me with that. But then I want to ask these other people that I'm going to be having on the show, because I really don't know why. I feel when people get arrested, you always have that opportunity to help yourself. They say to help yourself. Why did you take 30 years? Like, why, why did you not cooperate? What was like, what was holding you back so much that you wouldn't cooperate? And I know there are a lot of people like that, mm -hmm. that, just feel like they can't do it. Right. They're not able to do it. 
So, um, it's listen, it's a, I'm telling you, I, I could, I think people want to hear that. Yeah, it's a, it's the hardest decision to make. I mean, it took me over a year to, to you know, I used to pick up the phone and hang it up for a year. This right. is what I did for a whole year. And then when I finally did decide, I still couldn't make the call. I gave my, I made, I gave the card to my wife for her to go do it. Before I leave, I want to ask you one question, but before I leave, so Jimmy Coonan might be getting out. Would, how do you feel about that? I'm not too familiar. Jimmy Coonan, the boss of the Westies, your husband's boss. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You, know, you know, he's getting short. You know, I just. Yeah, he, I know. He's, he's, he's going to live to walk out the door. I, I mean, know. He's going to fool I, the government, you know, and he's going to get out. I know, but I never took too much. I never kept track of too much of the um, Irish. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I know he, he's 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 not he's he's going to make it out the door. That's well, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of them now because the the laws changed are making it out the door. Right. Yeah. You like know, look because... at Anthony Stenta. He committed ten murders. He's co he's coming home. He got parole. Yes. Yes. Jimmy so a lot Coonan of people... was chopping bodies up. He's coming out. You know. Right. And people are asking me, "How do you feel about it?" Listen, this is the law of the land. How do I feel? I don't think he's going to come out and start killing people. No. This is the law of the land. He got convicted. No. He got well, sentenced the law, within well, the law. Of Anthony. A lot of them are in their 70s. They're not thinking exactly. like that. And I know because they're not thinking like that. They're not looking to come out. They're looking to come out. They lost all those years. Everything. So they're, they're looking to come out and spend the maybe if they have the next five years, they're 74, right. 75 years old, to spend with their family, get to know their grandkids, get to know their kids. That's yeah. what they tell me. Of course, That's yeah. Theory. I don't think Mark's going to come out and start selling kilos of heroin. No, <laughs> I mean, no. On. What are you kidding? No, yeah. no, 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 no. Mark is, yeah. wants to see his kids, his grandkids. They, they don't like, even know what an email is. When I got out, I did it. Yeah, I didn't even know what, what, what a username was when I got out. He doesn't even know what a podcast is. I have to explain <laughs> to him. <laughs> you know, uh, but we, uh, we stayed very good friends through the years. That's I good. Friends. I always liked him. I always liked Mark. We always got along. He always treated me well. You I know, um, you know, he, you know, he knows I was getting all this stuff going on because I tell him like they're saying yeah. that I'm lying on this and that. He goes, yeah. "Tell them, give them the number. I'll call them up and tell them you knew God." <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, if you knew, Mark, listen, if you if you if you live if you well, what Mark you had no John. Exactly. They exactly. were together all, all the, the time. time. All the I time. Mean, I saw and, him and almost every when and Mark was stories. Yeah. When I was know. around, I saw Mark all the time on 101st Avenue in crack right. games and club A. And you know, we went to dinner and Peter Lugas. I mean, you know, if you right. knew Mark, you knew John. Exactly. So, you know, it's yeah. just ridiculous. But you know, I want my podcast to be positive. I don't want to talk exactly. about anybody. I want right. it to be where I understand people that informed and I understand, I want to understand about how people did 30 years or 20 years. Right. I want yeah, to understand definitely. why they yeah. did. So it's not like I'm going to come back at anybody to try to taunt them or say nasty yeah. things. That's not the kind of person. You I don't am. need to do that. You have a story to tell you. You don't need to. And that's people all that I want to do. People, people that are haters, they just have nothing else to say. Right. So, I just want to tell my story, have good guests on, treat my guests respectful like we did. And that's basically what I want to do. And if people want to say things, that's fine. That's about them. I yeah. I want to present myself like a lady. You know what I say? Listen, hate me, love me. Just hit the subscribe button. Hit the <laughs> subscribe button and view yes. my videos and just keep on hitting the subscribe button and just keep on viewing them. The haters, yes. the loving. So yeah, I'm getting there. I'm, get, I'm I'll matter. get there. I'll get there. I mean, I'm just starting matter. out. Yeah. You know, it's new to me. I I knew nothing of YouTube. The only thing I'm learning is there's a lot of nasty people, but you know what? I'm not gonna go low. I'm not no, going low. Go low. I'm Stay, not going don't, in the mud. No, you don't need to do that. At the end of the day, the good's going to so the good will prevail. One hundred percent. I feel that a hundred percent. Every, so. every, every, ever since I did certain things, everything's going up. Just don't pay them no mind. No, and you got to stay close to God. That's the basic. You That's have to it. Stay close That's to God. tomorrow. I will be. In, I will be at nine o'clock mass tomorrow. 
Yeah. Good. Listen, Good. it was a pleasure talking to a you. Pleasure. Love you guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I love you too. It's, I'll be in New York January 24th. We'll go we'll have dinner or something. A hundred percent. Yeah, I'll definitely hook up with you. We'll get together. I, I'll talk to you before Christmas. Sounds good, Anthony. And thank you uh, again. You've been so supportive to me, and I really appreciate you. it. And you've been thank supportive you so of me, much. too. I appreciate it. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye, Take guys. Bye. I will. Bye. <laughs>